This and this together, I get a negative times a positive is negative. The root t and root t together become t. So we've got 4 minus t. Any questions there? No? Next critical step is to realize that this and this is almost the same, except this has a t and a t squared. This one doesn't have a t, it has a, a t here. So I can factor a GCF out of this, right? Greatest common factor, I can pull a t out, which I did right here. And when I pull the t out of that, then they cancel out. And that's good, right? They cancel. Then I just rewrite this over one, and then now I just replace all my t's with four. That's one approach, yes. Ah, good question. You could if this t wasn't here, but because this t is here, you cannot do the difference of squares. You would just, yeah, you could. All right, that's one way to do it. Yeah, is there a question? I want to show you a different way, okay? Not necessarily easier or harder, it's just a different way. But I think it demonstrates something cool. Go back to this. I'm going to start the problem out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a T out first of the top. That GCF was there, right? So I just pull it out. Now that doesn't help. I mean, that, all I did was pull the T out the top, right? So nothing has gotten better. I can't cancel anything out. But I'm going to realize something that you don't talk about in college algebra. So let me, let me write it down over here. If I have this, I can do difference of squares on that, can't I? That turns into 2 plus t, 2 minus t. Because it's something squared minus something squared, right? That's not what I have, though, right? I don't, I don't have that. So in college algebra, you could, you could look at this, 4 minus t. I'm referring to this piece right here. And I'm actually going to look at that as a difference of squares. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is a difference of squares. It is what? It's 2 plus square root of t, 2 minus square root of t. Not very natural, but it is right. Because if I, if I foil this out, 2 times 2 is 4. These two are basically conjugates, so the middle terms are going to go away. And the last term, this times this. I get a negative t, which is that. Another way I can say it is this way. In college algebra, you learn this. This is the formula you learn in college algebra. Difference of squares. If you have a squared minus b squared, it's a plus b times a minus b. Different squares, college algebra. You could also have done this. That is a difference of squares, even though it doesn't look like it. It's the square root of a plus the square root of b times the square root of a minus the square root of b. That's equivalent. This is also a difference of square. So that's basically what I used here on this. If I do that, this in blue becomes 2 plus root t, 2 minus root t, and then it's gone right away. Not obvious, but you see the, the different path. I think the conjugate is mo what most students would do. Let's see if we can get uh, one more before we wrap it up. Oh, shit. We still got those. All right. Do we get zero over zero? If h goes to 0, if I let this h, no, notice it's the h, not the x. If I let h go to 0 right there, then I get x cubed, don't I? Minus x cubed. What's x cubed minus x cubed? 0 over 0. So that is bad, right? So we're going to do some algebra. Here's the algebra I'm going to do. I'm going to take x plus h. And I'm actually going to take that x plus h cubed. I'm actually going to do it by hand. I'm going to take x plus h 
times itself three times. I'm going to actually expand that out. Yeah, you could use Pascal's triangle. I will get into Pascal's triangle later. Um, this turns into the way that I do this, well, without Pascal's triangle, I actually multiply these two together first. So I foil these out. I'm not going to show the work. I'm just going to show you what you get if you foil those. So if you multiply those two together, you get this. And now you multiply an X through this and then an H through that and collect all your like terms. Again, I'm going to skip the showing of that and just give you the final result. That's what would happen if you multiplied that all together. I realize I'm skipping that work, so if you want to go through that, get with me, get with the tutor, we can get that cleared up. But that's what the top left of this, just, that's just this, right? It becomes x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed, that's this. Then minus x cubed was still up there, and then all over h. And in doing that, do you all see what happens with the x cubes? They're gone. It's still 0 over 0 right now. But what do you see in the numerator? Yeah, the, every term that's left has this, at least one h in them, right? So I'm going to pull a GCF now, greatest common factor, right? I'm going to pull this GCF and h out of the top. It leaves me with 3x squared plus 3x plus h squared all over h. Pull that GCF, and now I can cancel these h's out. So this, right, is this, which went right here. And then I still have the minus x cubed there. Can I now let h go to 0? Yeah, I can let h go to 0. Let h go to 0, and it kills that off, doesn't it? And all that's left is this right here. This is the first time we got an answer that has a variable in it, right? Every other time we've done a limit, we've got a numerical answer, haven't we? This one actually is a variable expression, but that's our answer. Did I mess up? Oh, wait, hold on. I messed up. I could tell with the looks on your faces that something wasn't right. Okay, hold on. I pulled, this is 3xh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 3xh. I pulled 1h, 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 1h. So I was left with an h, h squared. That one's right. Okay, my bad. That's going to go away. So all you get is this. Yeah, this one goes away as well. Thank you. I have this idea that I'm going to wind up like in math purgatory at some point when I die, and I'm going to get like lashings for all the mistakes I made in class. Yes? So why does that go away? And then why does this go away? Yeah. Because I'm going to let h go to 0 now, right? So if I let h go to 0, that's 0. 0 times anything will go to 0. That goes to 0. This one doesn't have an h anymore, so it stays. Okay. All right, how are we doing? I've got 12 minutes, all right? So what I'd like to do right now is remember the beginning of the class we were talking about calculus and like where this whole idea of like zero over zero came from. I'm going to see if I can't convince you that what we've done today is actually going to get us to that question of like the speed of something at an instant. Let's see if I can convince you or not. Now I'm going to do it with a specific example. So I want you to consider a graph of a function. And I want us to look at the function f of x equals x squared. Now that's just a parabola, right? And if I graph it, it looks something like this. And I want us to go to the value of 2 right there. And if I plug in 2 into that, what do I get? Four. Okay, so that right there is the point two four. K 
can we figure out the slope of the line that's tangent through that point, right? That was kind of the motivation of this whole thing. The way I'm going to do it is this. I'm going to just blow this up real quick. Here it is, right? Here's that point that I'm talking about right here. I know that's not drawn to scale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a second point over here. And I'm going to call this point, I don't know, x. And I'm going to plug that x into the function. And what I'm going to get out here is what? Y. But because I know what the function is, if x goes in, what comes out? x squared, right? Comes out. So this has as an ordered pair xx squared. Yes? If I connect these two together with a straight line, can you tell me the slope of that line? What would the slope of that line be? Slope would be rise over run. We had a formula for it, right? What was our formula? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. All right, this point right here, let's call this point 2, 4. We're not going to call it 2, 4. It is 2, 4, right? And this one right here is this. I'm going to call this um, X2, Y2. This is x1, y1. So the slope is what? Come on. It's x squared, right, minus 4 over x minus 2, right? That would be the slope of the line connecting these two. What I would like to do is figure out the slope of the tangent line, not, or the slope of the line not between these two points, but at that point, right? At that point exactly. So the way I can get to that point and get a better answer is by making this x move over to the left. If I move this x to the left, doesn't it bring it down like this? And I start to get a better approximation of what that slope really is, right? So I want to do, I have the graph ready to go. Let me erase this. I'm going to leave, no, I'll erase that as well. I'm going to put it right here, though. The slope we had was x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. That was the slope, right? And my picture, get this out of here. There's my parabola. Here's the point 2, 4. OK, here's the point 2, 4. And then what I'm doing is I'm bringing another point in. There it is. See that other point right there? That one right there, um, I'm going to label it. There it is. I'm going to connect those with the line right there. And what I'm going to try and do is move that point closer and closer and closer to the other point. And do you all see that I'm getting really close to like a tangent line by doing that? Right? But how, how do I move that point over? What does it mean for me to move that point over? If, if, that, if I'm calling this point right here x and this is 2, if I want to move that point closer, what do I have to do to this x? Let it, let it get closer to 2, right? Well, this is the formula for the slope of the tangent line, right? Or the slope of the line. I want to look at that and ask myself what happens when I let x get close to 2, right? So I'm going to take the limit of this as x goes to 2. You understand? Moving this point over makes the slope of that, right, get closer to the slope of the tangent line, which means I want this, the limit as x approaches 2 of that quantity right there. And what happens if I give you this, if I ask you to do this? What do you get when you try and plug in two? Zero to zero, right? It's okay. We've got algebra now, right? Trick, something. Difference of squares on top. Limit x approaches two. Difference of squares on top. Cancel. Now let x go to two. What do you get? Four. That means that in that picture, 
if I move this point over to this one, the slope of that line is approaching four. And if I lay them right on top of each other, the slope is four. That's what Newton was able to do. Basically, we just covered it in like one day, right? I mean, the question was, can you define the slope of a line at a point? Can you? Yes, but you need the limit to do it. You need a way to get around this idea of zero over zero. zero, over zero. All right, that's, that's it. We got five minutes. As far as homework is concerned for today, um, I'm going to list up here the homework that I want you to do for 1.3 and 1.4. I have five minutes, so give me a moment to do this. Ignore, ignore what's on the schedule, all right? So, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten. Three, four, five, seven through ten. Okay, that's all I want you to do for that. Well, oh man. You kicked me out. I have no idea what's going on there. Sir, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so it says on the syllabus that our class comes at 4.30. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 4.30. Y'all need li I'm so used to classes ending at the 40 mark. I'm just like, hey, but it was fun, right? You know? Yeah, if you got to go, go. But I'll put, the, I'll put this up. It'll be on the video. That for sure. Um, yeah, I don't want to hold people up. Oh, y'all are so nice. Look at you. Okay, 1.4. Please remind me next time. Eleven through eleven through twenty eight. And that's it for now. All right. And I mean all of these, right? Not just odds. Try them all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody been able to get into the ebook? I have not tried. You did what? I just got into it. You were able to? It didn't give you a error or anything, or like? You have to like try it multiple times. I tried it yesterday, today, multiple times. Okay, let's do this. Go, go back. Go back. Close that window out. Okay, go to modules again. Okay, click on that, the one above it. No, nope, oh. not that one. That's right. Yeah, click on that one. Just see what happens. It worked for me when I did that. I was missing the other one. Well, but the other one should have worked. It looks more promising, doesn't it? It looks more promising. 
So I think what I'll have to do is maybe, re yeah, there we go. Oh, wait, and then where would the homework be? So the e-book. So um, I believe it's down the bottom right-hand corner. Keep going, keep going. There's the book. Oh. And then you just look up. You just go through the sections and then go to the pages and, yeah. I'll remove that. That that It worked when I did it, but I think it worked because it knew it was me. It likes me, I guess. So two, if I'm going to change it right now. Okay, I'm going to unpublish that. Did that work now? Yes. Okay. There we go. So I change it now where that link's no longer there. So I'll just... All right, let me turn my video off real quick because I'm still recording. <laughs>